Indeed. Okay. So we're going to move on now to a topic that's kind of uh, bubbling up a lot more recently. Yeah. Um, and that, and you're actually a, an amazing person to talk to about this because you're a pro gamer. But I want to talk about, you know, should we consider pro gamers athletes? Because, um, I mean, with the World Cup sort of hype right yeah. now, <laughs> uh, a lot of people are getting who aren't necessarily into sports all the time yeah. are sort of like sports all of a sudden <laughs> and like, yay, soccer. So, or football. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, and I just want to sort of talk about people who aren't necessarily into esports all the time, but they sort of see things like the Dota 2 tournament has a $10 million prize pool at this point, mm -hmm. and they're like, esports, yes, we love this all of a sudden. Yeah. But uh, I don't know if we <laughs> should be considering the people who are playing the games athletes or not. And this is a really big debate that I see come up in basically every single article that I write is, oh, they're, a they're not athletes, don't call them athletes. But I mean, pro gamers train super hard. I mean, yeah. they have crazy regimes that they go through, mm -hmm. just like regular athletes. Yep. I mean, they're not like, I mean, you look <laughs> physically <laughs> strong like a normal athlete, but I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of them don't, you know, train in the same way, but they yeah. still train really hard. Yeah, um, so, I mean, let's go around and sort of talk about, <coughs> how, you know, that whole thing. Yeah, the first thing I want to actually want to bring up is uh, a couple months ago, uh, I brought it to Mitch's attention with that uh, the league players in for coming in to play for LCS, uh, if they're foreign, get the same visas that athletes do. Yes, right. Uh, I, I'm not even. I'm not sure if it can. Says it's athlete. It may say it's an athlete. Like I think it is an athlete's visa or, or a, a competitor's visa, sure. or something like that. So, in at least the government's mind, they're coming in to compete in an event. So I, I definitely think that is a forward motion into yes, I think they're athletes. Sure. They're, they're these people that are coming in to maybe not fit, completely fit the physical thing, but they are yeah. coming in to compete. It's a hard thing, right? Because we, we've been so attuned for literally centuries that an athlete is somebody who is yeah. like a physical prowess, like Grecian Olympics. The original Grecian Olympics is like you are the physical, you are the best manifestation of an right. athlete mm -hmm. wins the Olympics. So now we're approaching this time in history where mm -hmm. people are playing video games with, you know, athletic proficiency. They are, there are comparable levels of skill and comparable levels of training and mm -hmm. they're, you know, the, the layout of a team is you have five people who are cooperating and they have a coach and they have mm -hmm. people who like are in charge of their mm -hmm. named organization. It is very similar to a sport. It is yeah. very similar to any mainstream league like the NHL or the NFL or the NBA or whatever. And we're sort of getting used to the idea of these people aren't doing something that is as physically taxing as mm -hmm. you know, playing a soccer match, mm -hmm. but they are doing things that require a similar level of skill in the context of what they're doing. Yeah. And, and at least in an organizational perspective, they're now hiring, like, teams, at least uh, in the top teams, are hiring, like, like coaches and, uh, like, people purely do analysis. People mm -hmm. to, to watch film and, and look at, watch the, the team play and not be, like, motivate them, but to be, like, look at this specific thing we're doing and we're going to work on that one thing today. Mm -hmm. I, and having someone paid to do that, it, it, like, as soon as you start, like, I think having a structure in place like that, then you are legitima legitimizing mm -hmm. the entire like esports mm -hmm. athlete package. persona package. Yeah. What do you What do you have to say about this? You know, as a professional player. Yeah. Um, I would love if you were like, no, this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, one thing I will say is, at the end of the day, it's all like semantics, right? It, sure. it, you could sit here and argue about how, how you're going to define an athlete, you know, mm -hmm. but does it really matter? No, because yeah. whether you think it's an, you know they're an athlete or whatever, it doesn't matter. It just people just need to be open minded to the fact that this is happening, whether you like it or not, yep. <laughs> and how you're going to recognize it. You know that's on you. That's your opinion. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. um, it, it, I think people just need to be more accepting of the fact that this is something um, individuals choose to do. This is something that they're good at, and it's not necessarily like they don't have to be in there. Like you said, like I've I've been like you know a 20 sport athlete my entire life. You know I grew up playing sports. That's what I did, mm -hmm. and that's why I came into video games. You know, like while I was playing those sports, I was getting older, and I was like going to go to college, and I was like you know eventually I'm not going to be able to play sports anymore. You know, on a competitive level. So mm -hmm. what can I do to f like feed that that competitive you know fire? So um, this was another way to do it. You know, you're not you're not running you know a mile or lifting mm -hmm. you know or pushing people around or jumping up to grab a rebound but um 
the mental side is there, obviously, you know, yeah. like imagine someone, you know, you're in the playoffs, you're shooting a free throw or something, you know, you have to have the mental toughness <clears throat> to, you know, kind of zone everything else out and just do what yeah. you need to do. Um, and that's more prevalent in video games, I'd say, because especially with the mouse, you know, mm. one small movement can be a pretty large yeah. movement in the game. Mm. So to have like the, you know, the mental dexterity to, to not let things bug you and, um, so you make that little mechanical mistake or mm-hmm. or even mental mistake, decision-making, um, that's a big deal. And it's something that is shared between, you know, a sport um, that we – a traditional sport or an e-sport. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, like I said, I, I, I was at the gym the other day and I heard someone say, you know, ping pong is more of a sport than soccer. And it's like, you know, people always argue. What is yeah. – you know, but it's – but cares? Is that, is like, it, why can't you just enjoy right? it? Yeah, I think, I think the fact is that it, it, it's here. You know, even smi- mm-hmm. a smite team right now is being salaried to play. And it's a new game, um, so that's not going to change. That's something that's going to continue. Yep, you yeah. know, the video game industry, as you guys know, is mm-hmm. huge, and it's mm-hmm. not getting any smaller. Um, so, so people are just going to have to be more open-minded about it, and that's the important thing, I think. Do you remember the first time you got a kill in a MOBA? Like, no. do you, man, I do. I remember it so vividly. Like, I remember really? scoring my first goal in <laughs> hockey. Like, they, I just had like such a similar rush of feelings. Really. Like, and every time I get a kill in Dota, mm. and every time we win, it feels like winning a hockey game or a baseball game. Like, any sport I played growing up, there's a similar feeling. Like, man, I hit a base hit. Yeah. <laughs> feels like getting a kill in a MOBA to me. Yeah. Like, they're just, I don't know, the chemical reaction is very oh, similar to me. I, I, and I will, I will say, maybe not the first kill, but, you know, there's times where I've, especially in Counter-Strike, when I was on, you know, big stages at, like, WCG or something, yeah. and... You, you you clutch around, you know, like you and, turn things around and, and, and people you, cheer. You just want yeah, you just want to scream and you want to like yeah. you know <laughs> yell and and that 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 seems kind of strange because you're sitting yeah. down playing a video game. Mm. But that's the same feeling I got when I was in high school and I'd score yeah. like a game winning yeah. basket. You know, like you go you just pump your fist like that's it's the same feelings. Yeah. It's just a different you know mechanism to get there. Totally. I mean, I I think it's just what you're saying is it's semantics like yeah. this is here to stay esports is here it's a thing now you know like you're saying these players are getting salaried for multiple games now mm-hmm. um to play them professionally there are teams there are team houses there are coaches nowadays you yeah. know you can get a visa to come over here i mean it's a thing so i i'm i'm sort of proud of esports and followed it for a really long time and i'm glad that it's to this point now yeah. where um where we can sort of have these types of discussions and be you know and be smart about where it's at today. Um, And one other thing that I was really sort of proud with the esports community was at DreamHack this last weekend with this um, Hearthstone tournament. So Mm -hmm. I know we we usually talk about MOBAs here, but there was this sort of weird um, controversy that happened at DreamHack with the Hearthstone tournament. You're nodding your head, so you must have been following this. So basically what happened was um, in the finals of the DreamHack Hearthstone tournament, one of the players, RDU, was messaged what the other player he was playing against had in his hand. Whoa! And oh, shit, it was yeah. in the very like last sort of round, and it was eventually deemed that him getting that information had no sort of strategical bearing on uh, the win. He would have yep. won no matter what. There was only sort of one play he could have done, and yeah. so knowing what the other guy had didn't matter. But, you know... Everyone was just like, oh, my God, this guy yeah. got told, you know, what was in his hand. They had the exact same reaction that yeah, he yeah. just did. You know, get out the pitchforks. Like, this guy <laughs> is cheating the whole time. And sort of, you know, and that was sort of what happened on day one. And then the next day, um, like, the guy who he was playing against, Amaz, sort of came out. He sent out this video saying he didn't cheat. Like, you guys need to calm down. Like yeah, the, That's good for him. Um, and, and it was really good for him. And that's exactly what I'm getting to, is that that was sort of a nice professionaliz- <clears throat> professionalism yeah. that I saw in Amaz, but I didn't exactly see in the community who got yeah. out these pitchforks all of a sudden. Right. So what do you think about that whole yeah. controversy? I saw that video, too, because I actually, you know, before I go to bed, I turn on some streams and stuff. And every once in a while, I watch a Hearthstone stream. And... Um, it was interesting, you know, and uh, it was, yeah, he's a really nice guy in general, um, and he's a big streamer. Right. And I think that kind of shows you the power of having um, a big viewership, you know, um, having, you know, 10,000 viewers. Those people, obviously, when you lose, they're going to find a reason why you lost, and they're just going <laughs> to attack, attack, attack. And so um, as soon as they heard that, you know, he did get information about his cards, it was a big deal, but you know it was good for him to come out and say, you know, calm down. I lost. I didn't. I didn't get cheated. I yeah. lost. And that's that's a that's a, a very mature thing to do. 
Mm. Um, and it's a good thing to see um, from the video game industry because, you know, you see a lot of, uh, I think a lot of people view us as like kids, you know, and we're immature and mm -hmm. stuff. But that's like a very mature thing to do is to accept defeat and acknowledge that, you know, yeah, something weird probably happened, but. But he still that, outplayed me. Yeah, he outplayed me. I lost. And that's that's what happened. And I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to win next time. So I, I think it was a, a good step forward for, like, everyone in the yeah, community. Yeah, I think so, too. But Blizzard, out of Do Not Disturb or something Seriously. for these games, oh, or DreamHack yeah. needs a tournament to mode a for tournament. Your, yeah, yeah, exactly. That is spectator actually, mode. That's actually a really um, interesting point. I was going to say that about Smite earlier, is that, you know, Blizzard obviously um, didn't do much to prevent things like that from happening. Yeah. Um, and going forward, I think the, the companies, the developers that – are more involved in the competitive scene will see their games be more successful because um, I know Hyrus is a company that they, they basically did the whole launch tournament themselves, you know, mm -hmm. and they, they're very involved in the community. Um, and people post on forums all the time and talk about, you know, what needs to be done for the for casual play, for tournament play, for everything. And they, and they listen and they respond. Right. And mm. I think that's something that needs to happen going forward. You can't just sit in your little developer bubble <laughs> and say, no, this is what needs to happen. No, this is what needs to happen. Because, you know, there's thousands of people playing your game that have pretty good opinions because they play yep. for a lot of hours every day. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think that that's something that definitely needs to be looked at. And, and I think as a community, as like, as video game players, people should gravitate towards games that the developers respect their opinion, um, because that's 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 what ultimately should be done, and that's going to help their gameplay experience anyway. That'll be the natural order of things too. Like a community that knows the developers are listening and involving them are the is the community that will foster. Right. You know, that's going to be that. That's just where people are going to go because if they're playing a game and nobody's giving them feedback or responding to their feedback, they're just going to bounce. Yeah. yeah.